From design to storytelling, there's a lot that goes into creating animations and motion graphics with inside of After Effects. So in this tutorial, we're gonna build this scene by only using circles and compositing effects. From these techniques, learn how to add depth and texture, character, and grit to your motion graphics. And with any tutorial that you can watch, always be thinking about how you can use the concepts within the video for your future projects, because there's a lot of cool concepts in this video that can be implemented in a ton of different ways. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Please be sure to drop a like on this video. And if you're ready to create a scene just by using circles and a few compositing techniques, let's jump in and let's get started. Alrighty, After Effects is loaded up. You can download the project files for free if you wish to follow along or just break this down. So we're gonna start with a blank composition. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is create the circles that we'll be using to build out our scene. So we'll come here to the top, grab the ellipse tool, and from the center, just draw out a perfect circle by holding down shift on your keyboard. And we'll make sure the circle is fairly big for our composition. Then we'll come here to effect, generate, we'll grab a gradient ramp. We'll set one of the colors to be a nice bright sort of blue color like this. And we'll come in here to the second color and we'll do like a darker blue like so. So we'll create this nice gradient. We can also move these points around uh, so we can decide where the gradient is gonna be. Then we'll go to layer, layer styles, and we'll grab a inner shadow. We'll open up our inner shadow and we'll set our color to be a nice light blue color like this. We'll set the opacity to 100%. We'll set the blend mode to normal. We'll set the distance to 50 and the size to 60. So now we have this beautiful colorized look for our circle, but I wanna add some texture to this to make it a little bit more gritty. So what we're gonna do is we'll grab the pen tool and by clicking a few points here, we'll create a custom shape to cover up one of the halves of the circle. All right, make sure you go to the fill and set this to a very nice dark blue color. Then go to effect, blur and sharpen and grab a Gaussian blur. Set the blurriness up to maybe like 270 or something like that. Then go to Effect, Channel, and grab Set Matte. Set the Take Matte from Layer to your previous circle. So that should be the bottom layer, so it should be layer number two. Let's go ahead and toggle switch the modes until you see the blend mode and set the blend mode for the top layer uh, to dissolve. And if the color is too dark, go ahead and select your shape layer and actually make the color a little bit brighter. All right, so let's go ahead and grab the lips tool, set the color to be maybe a nice light blue color, and we'll just create a circle here, and this will be a highlight. Set the blend mode to dissolve again and then go to your second shape layer there, copy both the effects that we did previously and paste it onto the new circle. And make sure you uncheck repeat edge pixels for the Gaussian blur. So now we'll have this nice highlight added to our circle. All right, so when you're done with your circle, you can go ahead and grab everything and go to layer pre-compose, call it circle textured and click okay. All right, so how can we use this circle to create a nice piece of land like this here for our scene? So what we're gonna do is we'll take our circle, make sure it's turned to a 3D layer and just hit Ashton keyboard for scale. We can break the chain here and we can manipulate the X scale by a little bit. This will allow us to have a little bit more room to add other things to our scene like the house later on. But we'll go ahead and position this where we see fit for it. So now that we have this here in place, what we'll do is we'll take this layer, we'll duplicate it, go to edit, duplicate, and we'll have P on keyboard for position and we can set the Z value back uh, this will allow us to create some really cool camera movement later in our scene. So I'll bring this over here. We can make this object larger by reconnecting the scale and just scaling this up by a little bit. And you know, that looks okay right there. And then we'll do one more duplicate. Hit P on keyboard for position, bring this one back. And I could put this like over here, for example. So now that we have some circles in here, it looks terrible. Let's go to layer new solid. We'll call it background, click okay. Bring it underneath everything and go to effect, generate and grab a quick gradient ramp. We want to keep it a little bit brighter on the right side and maybe coming here to the left and make this a little darker up here. Uh, but we'll go ahead and expand on the scene here in a second. Now the thing I want to do real quick is go to layer, new camera, click OK. We'll come here and begin with our timeline. We'll, we'll open this up, go to transform, add a keyframe for point of interest and position. We'll move these keyframes forward in time to maybe like five seconds and I'm going to Hit C on my keyboard until we get this dolly zoom camera tool here with the double arrows. And I'm just gonna zoom out of my scene like this. And this will create some just initial camera movement here. One thing I wanna wanna do is add a little bit more foreground elements. So I'll go ahead and duplicate one of our circles. Hit P on our keyboard for position. And this time we'll bring it forward and we'll just kind of reposition it as we see fit here. Do another duplicate, bring that forward. So now we'll have some extra foreground objects in here and it's gonna look good. Another thing I can do is continue to hit C on my keyboard until we get this orbit tool and I can like rotate the scene 
a little bit. So maybe I'll have it rotate this way. And then I'll go to the next keyframe and I'll rotate it towards the other way, for example. So now we have our basic camera movement in here and we continue to build onto our scene. Before we move further into the video, we have a sponsor and that's us. If you use After Effects or Premiere Pro, then be sure to check out our Motion Duck extension, which has over 20,000 editable templates for your projects. For example, you can browse, import and edit templates all from the Motion Duck extension. So you'll be able to save hours of time on every project while producing high quality work. You can also download our free 100 template pack with the links in the description below. And if you purchase anything from our website, you will be supporting our channel. So thank you very much. So I went ahead and created another colored circle here, which is gonna be white. And then I threw that in the back of our scene as well. So all the same techniques apply with the positioning and the 3D layers, but now we have this overall scene here. So now we can really take this to the next level by adding in whatever we want to add. So if you wanna have some objects or whatever, um, remember you can download the project file, but you can download like free vector icons from freepix.com, which is where I got this cabin from. Uh, and then you can like bring it into your scene, uh, make sure it's set to a 3D layer and just, you know, fit it exactly where it needs to go. So I want it to be right behind this hill right here. I'll put it underneath that layer. So as you insert objects into your scene, you know, they're automatically going to be placed into wherever they're going to be at. So you know, that looks pretty cool. But one thing I really want to talk about when building a scene like this is compositing and really blending the objects together and making it stand out. So I'll come here to layer, new adjustment layer, go to effect, noise and grain and add a quick noise to this. Set it to 12%. Uncheck use color noise and go to effect, color correction, curves. We'll come here to red channel and we'll bring this up by a little bit. We'll come here to the uh, blue channel, we'll bring it up as well. And we can go to green channel and kind of manipulate this as we will. And this will kind of color grade everything together. And this will put the same sort of tint of color into everything uh, and create a nice composite. So feel free to mess around with this until you get the look that you want. Another thing I like to do here is add an atmospherical effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and create myself a new solid, call it particles, click okay. And then we'll go to effect simulation, CC particle world. Now you could use the snowfall effect to create snow, which is what we're doing here, but I like the particle world effect way more. All you need to do is move that layer forward in your timeline, drag out the out point. So we'll come here to the particle first and we'll set the particle type to a faded sphere, set our colors both to white, set the birth and depth size to 0.1. Then we'll close this up. We'll go to the physics. We'll set the animation to twirly and set the resistance to maybe about four. Then we'll close that up. We'll go to the producer. We'll increase the radius X to go across our composition and also increase the radius Y to go up across our composition. And then we'll really increase the Z depth here so we can have all these particles, you know, in the front and the back of our scene, in the foreground and the background of our scene. Then we'll come here to the birth rate, set this up to a crazy number like 35, and then we'll set our longevity to two. And since this is a 3D effect, it'll make it look like we're flying through the snow with our particles. Uh, in here. So right now I want to create this beautiful depth of field because we have this 3D scene and we have a camera in here, which means we can open it up and we'll go to camera options and we'll, we'll come here where it says depth of field off. We'll click it to on and not much will happen because we don't really have any extreme settings. So, but if we come here to aperture and we set this up to say 180 and one thing you notice at the beginning of our scene, everything will be kind of out of focus. And as our camera dollies in and does a little bit of camera movement, as we get closer to say the house is going to become more in focus. So that's a great way to add a nice depth of field to your scene. You know, another thing we can do in terms of color contrast, because right now the background is really bright with our background. I'll go ahead and create another adjustment layer and put our adjustment layer underneath our foreground objects, which is gonna be our blue hills. And just put it right on top of our white circles that we've created and go to effect color correction curves. And we can just kind of bring this all down a little bit, maybe even the colors as well. And nice, and this will ultimately allow our scene to just kind of have that nice color contrast in there. And the last thing I want to do is create a smoke coming up from our chimney. Very easy to do this. I'll grab the pen tool, I'll click a point, and just kind of draw out this nice shape like this. Make sure fill is set to none, click OK, and go to where stroke, set the saw color, and click OK. And we'll use like a sh bigger stroke width here. You know, that's what we have. Make sure that this shape layer is also a three layer and put underneath, you know, a cabin, for example, if that's what we're creating it for. One thing I want to do is open up the shape layer and go to contents, go to shape one, Go to stroke one and go to taper. I'm gonna come here to the end lane, set it up to 100% and also come to the end width and go ahead and increase that by a little bit. And you know, this will kind of taper off that a little bit as well. Then we'll go to effect, distort and grab a quick turbulent displace. I'm gonna set the amount to 10 and the size to 50. Alt click stopwatch for evolution. And I'm gonna type in time asterisk 
250. By following the techniques in this video, you can come up with really cool scenes like this just by using simple circles and compositing techniques here in After Effects. If you haven't already, please be sure to hit that subscribe button to our YouTube channel, Sunday Film. We post multiple After Effects videos every single week right here and always be creating.